This is Nurses Voices. On today's episode of Nurses Voices, we'll be speaking with two late career public health nurses, one a director and one a manager at Prairie Mountain Health in Brandon, Manitoba. Nurses Voices is supported by the Canadian Nurses Foundation and by the Canadian Nurses Association. Welcome to Nurses Voices. I'm Mary Wheeler. And I'm Gail Donnan. In our episode today, we're gonna meet Jane and Janice, public health nurses who are working in the front line of vaccination distribution in Brandon, Manitoba. Manitoba was hit hard by COVID. As of this week, 73% of the population have had their first dose and 38% of 12 year olds and older are now fully vaccinated due in large part to the hard work of public health nurses. So I'd like to introduce Janice Lowe. Janice is a registered nurse with a passion for population and public health, who is currently working as a public health director in Prairie Mountain Health, Manitoba's most westerly health region. And Jane Skinner, Jane is also a registered nurse. She has 42 years of experience in public health. She's just come out of retirement to take on the role of regional manager, Prairie Mountain Health COVID vaccine sites in Brandon, Manitoba. So welcome to both of you. So I'm wondering, Jane, if we could start with you. Why after retirement, but you came into a new role. You were a public health nurse in the front line before retirement, and now you've come back into a management role. So I think our listeners would really like to know what that shift has been like for you from staff nurse to manager in the middle of a pandemic. Well, I, as Jan will attest to, um, over the many years, I said there, I was never going to be a manager. Um, I was a public <laughs> health nurse. I wanted to be with the people. Um, that was really important to me. And I loved doing what I did until the day that I walked out the door. When Jan contacted myself about being a manager for the COVID vaccine sites, I sat and, and thought about it. And, and for 42 years, I've been doing vaccine. I've been doing immunization clinics. I knew that I had that skill set. The advantage is for me right now as well is that coming out of retirement, I had nothing else on my plate. So I could give 100% and do it, and I'm not being torn in, in other ways. I can't get to my family right now. And so that was also a main uh, thing that drove me because I want to get people vaccinated so that um, we are, I can get to see my families. And I'm very happy to say that as of today, Manitoba is number one in Canada for our vaccine immunization rate. So I'm very, very happy and very, very proud. And Prairie Mountain Health is, is right up with the provincial standards. So we're very, we're doing very well. I'm listening and there's so much joy just even when you're talking not only the success, the success of the vaccination, but just wanting to come back to public health. Can you talk a little bit more about what public health means to you to be a public health nurse? I tell everybody I, I started and it's never been the same job. If you ask me, did I do the same thing? On May 28th, 1979 is the same thing I did May 29th, 2020. Not nowhere near the same thing. The roles have changed. And that's the exciting thing about public health is we, we change, we adapt, we go with what's happening. We're always there. I mean, people maybe don't know that we're there. I loved getting to know my communities. Um, that was a great, great part of it. And I think you have to want to get to know your communities and get to know everybody that's in that community. It's knowing the people that, that are so special. And um, I, I got to actually do an immunization clinic this week um, for um, our sexuality education resource. We wanted a safe and, and comfortable place for the, the clients that usually go there. And, I had started up our trans health clinic in public health here in Brandon and hadn't really got, got the chance to say goodbye to any of our clients because of COVID. Well, I was immunizing and there was a whole pile of them that came in and I got to say goodbye. It was such a wonderful, like it was, it, it's just nice to see those people and find out about them. And public health nurses, I mean, we're not very threatening. We really have not got a whole lot that, that really 
whatever, I, I just ask you, please don't smoke. I'd really rather you not smoke. And if you're going to smoke, then make, let's see how we can work around that. And, um, you know, I'd like you, you know, to be safe and how can we keep you safe and, and, and do that. But, but really, and truly, um, I can honestly say I've never had the door slammed in my face because when public health comes, um, we're just there to be able to offer some support and some help. And, and people love that we have tons of knowledge, tons of knowledge about everything, maybe not an expert in some of the areas, but we do have the knowledge about all of it. And um, for that, I think public health is, is amazing. So then Janice, you make it happen for Jane to really love what she's doing in a director's role. So what have been some of your challenges as the director? There have been lots of challenges, I will be honest. We try to focus on what's going well because there's so many things going well. But I mean, our main role is to not make things happen for Jane or other nurses, but just to support them to do do their jobs, do the good work that they're doing. So we might, uh, we want to make sure we have the financial resources, the logistical resources, the tools they need, and the human resource has been the biggest issue through the COVID pandemic because in public health, we don't have surge capacity. We are creative, we're innovative, we figure things out, but when we have a crisis of any kind, a, an outbreak, a pandemic, evacuees, we really just prioritize and set something aside and some work just doesn't get done and we focus on the most immediate tasks. So it's really just supporting nurses to do to do their job. That's one thing that Prairie Mountain Health is very lucky for. I wouldn't be able to do this job if we didn't have support of management. And management is extremely supportive. If you're looking at good public health, it's come from the top. I, I agree, Jane. We've had phenomenal support across the region from nurses, non-nurses, and in our province as well. We've got, you know, we've got great public health leadership in the province of Manitoba, and that's really helped us to work through this challenging time. Public health nurses are really at the forefront. We work with multiple partners and stakeholders and other public health providers, and they're the leaders at the forefront of a pandemic, trying to keep people safe and prevent the spread of infection for sure. I have about 10 questions I could ask, but uh, I'm gonna go back to something you hinted at, and I know from a previous conversation, you've, you've talked more about it. Um, uh, Jane, but it has to do with the fact that people don't often know that there are any public health nurses. And I think in one conversation, you used the phrase flying under the radar. So can you talk a little bit about public health nursing under the radar, what that, what that looks like for you? Well, I guess because public health is looking out for your community and looking out for the individuals in that community. We aren't needing that uh, CAT scan. We aren't needing that special equipment in ICU. We don't have special equipment that we need that somebody can donate money to saying, well, look at our newborn birth rates are great because of, there's no way to say it's because we happen to have a great Families First program. We have great prenatal education and, and we've, you know, we've done all of this other stuff that that all factors in, but it's really hard to prove that that actually has, has benefited. And, and made a change in any of the stats. So we just kind of go along and we do our stuff. We kind of like sometimes to be under the radar because we get a lot done. <laughs> and um, and so, um, you know, that that we can do that. And, and uh, so I, I think that in some ways, public health nurses, we'd like to stay under the radar. I understand what you're saying, because if you liken it to some of the, or compare it to some of the high profile razzle dazzle parts, those folks are always in the eye. So everybody's watching every little thing. And I would imagine there's less, uh, let's say, control over what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. Right, which is the exciting thing about public health. It's not, never the same two days in a row. Um, and so and if you get a really great idea and you think, you know, I'd like to try this with my, with my community, with my area, then away you go and, and you can do that. Can you think of something in 42 years, a long time, can you think of something like that that you could share? I don't know, I think, I think there's been many. When I first started nursing, I was up north and 
when I got there, we used to have to send anybody uh, that was need to get out of the community. We sent them by taxi and I'm going, this doesn't seem right. So I went to the municipality and we recruited and worked with them and provided them information. And there's an ambulance in that community now. I think what's really key about public health nurses, and you, as you mentioned, Jane, is we our role is to know our communities, know who the movers and the shakers are, who are the partners and the stakeholders that we might want to work with if we assess a need in a community or a, a group or a population brings a need forward. We aren't necessarily the doers, but we support the community to do what they need to do to be healthy. And another example I think of, Jane, is we were concerned about some teen pregnancy rates and high school graduation rates for, for parents in that situation, and we didn't have a daycare available in our high school. So to improve our high school graduation rates for young parents, Jane was instrumental in working with a group of partners in the community to get that daycare up and running in our largest high school in the community. And it's available not just for students in that high school. So young moms could return to school and, and graduate. And Jane was on that board as our Prairie Mountain Health representative and was chair of that board for, for many, many years. So that's another example I think of when I think of a lot of that great community development work that Jane herself has done and many public health nurses across the region. You had a, to give an elevator pitch on why you should become a public health nurse when you graduate. What would you tell uh, aspiring nurses? I would tell an aspiring nurse that this is the best job you could ever have. It's, it's very, every day is different. You can, I mean, in nursing in general, you could be a registered nurse and do a multitude of things. Very similar, you could be a public health nurse and be specialized or generalist. You work with your communities, you work with individuals, and it's a privilege and an honor to be in people's homes and part of their lives. And case management is a large part of what we do. We get to know our families and communities from preconception through to death oftentimes. And that's a really unique relationship that we that we build and it can be intergenerational. So and Jane will attest to that, you know, you have a family and then they're having children and then they're having grandchildren. Yes. They're a large part of that family's life and that's different from episodic care. And it's very rewarding. And uh, you can make a difference at a population level and at a community level and at, a, at an individual and family level. So it's very rewarding. It's not for everybody. It's not glitz and glamour. Like Jane said, we don't have a lot of high tech equipment. We might have a baby scale and a vaccine fridge, um, but it's very rewarding. And the relationships and the partnerships are, are really key. So if you kind of like to work alone and you don't really like that partnership piece, it's probably not the career for you, but it, it's so rewarding and there's so many career opportunities. I think if we, we work with students and give them great broad experiences for their rotations through public health or their senior practicums, any students we have for senior practicums, we are, they often come back to public health, sometimes not right away, but often in the future, because I think um, people can see how rewarding it can be to work at a population health level and what a difference it makes. You talked about those experiences, and I, I, one time I was a public health nurse, so I can relate to it also, where you're meeting with someone for one purpose, but it is in the conversation and the story with that individual or the family that you're able to touch other lives, other people within that home. Um, is there anything that stands out for you? Um, I, I think so often I, we go into people's homes because they've had a baby then you're looking at the housing and okay now what are we doing about the housing and so then we get a hold of the housing people and you're going to do that and you're going to be working with the housing people to to upgrade their their housing and to work with that you know we build that trust sometimes over time like Jane said um, sometimes even you would see that at teen clinic I know Jane teens would present with one issue because it sort of seems like a safe issue to, to come and ask for assistance with. But as you build that relationship, more of that story comes out. People start to trust you with their very personal and intimate details of their life. And you know, we might get people connected to housing or primary care or help with a, a job search or helping fill out some paperwork so that they can actually file some income tax or might be with domestic violence or a history of child abuse that they've never ever shared with anybody. Um, so it's that trust and relationship that's so, so critical in public health nursing and the knowledge of all of the community resources to help people 
people tell you things that I'm going, I probably don't need to know all that, but they will tell me their stories. I'm <laughs> going into an old shack in Northern Manitoba with the beaver balls hanging and a woman handing me a cup of tea and I'm looking at it and thinking, well, we'll just attempt this a little bit. Her granddaughter actually is down attending Browning University right now. And she, she said, you know, we remember that really melts my heart. That's why I went into public. That's those are the things that you want to see. I hear some things in what both of you are saying that should apply across the board regardless of where mm -hmm. you're practicing or what your specialty is. And one of them is this connection to community. Mm -hmm. I mean, we do a big job. You know, my career has been in mostly in academia. We do a big job of talking, talking, social determinants, whatever. But I'm not sure, other than in public health, there's much attention paid to who is this person in front of me and where do they come from and what is, as Mary says, their story or, or their issues. And it may look like one thing, but it may not be that at all. It may have to do with housing or poverty or food insecurity or, or whatever. So that part strikes me. The other part was your comments about the leadership. And I think that also is something, it's not just in public health. We've heard that in other nurses' voices, people talking about what you really need is support from mm -hmm. leadership. Maybe you could say a word or two about this notion of connection to community. How would you talk to nurses about that, even if they don't want to be public health nurses? I mean, I look at eMERGE, like we want the eMERGE nurses to know uh, you know, where are the social workers? Where are the people to help somebody that's come in, uh, you know, with a third attempt of suicide? Where where are we doing with, um, like, who are who are the resources? What are no? I mean, the merge nurses, they're not going to be able to. They're too busy. They're doing whatever. But the ones who do have some ideas about about what the, what's out there in their community. And, and I do agree with you. I think part of being a nurse is that I do know my community. And if I'm going to work in the community and be a nurse, then I, I, I think I need to know all about it. I don't think we should ever as nurses ever look at an individual and just sort of take that shell and say, oh, that's that type of person. Um, it always drives me crazy when I hear about, oh, that's my tonsillectomy and that's my I, mean, I have no idea. I've never stepped foot in a hospital. <laughs> I shouldn't talk about hospitals. Um, <laughs> it's the people have a name and, and they they're part of your community. So I agree, Chase. And I think that one of the the benefits of public health nursing and being in the community when we work in clients' homes is you really get to know that family and it's very different than interacting with someone in a controlled environment or within the four walls of a facility. It's an uncontrolled environment. You're on your own in an autonomous practice and you really get to know people in the environment that they live, work, play. For some people, the public health nurse is the first person that's really met them where they're at, been the first person that they've actually interacted with who really they felt was non-judgmental and that they could trust to share their story and, and wouldn't be labeled. And I think that public health nurses learn a lot through their academia, but I think to a large degree, it's really the values and beliefs that people hold as individuals. I wanna build on what Gail asked. Is there a way that you can look at what do we need for public health, but what do we need for nursing in general? What needs to happen? Do you have any insights? We live in a world right now where everybody is worrying about myself and me and my number one and that's not public health nursing we need to be caring for the whole group of people the pandemic has been a great example of that we've used the line all the way through the pandemic that getting your vaccine is helping somebody else out um, it's helping your community out it's helping your family out i would hope to think that maybe we've learned a little bit from pandemic but I, I also have lost faith in some that um, that we see just how entitled some people do feel. I, I think the pandemic may have shown people how much more important that we need to be doing some of this and thinking about, about all of this. We're really about the collective action for the greater good, I think, in public health. It's about the population and what's the benefit and the greater good for the masses versus the individual many times. 
because some good, as you say, some uh, awareness has come out of this awful situation across the world, really. And there are always good lessons to be learned, and that's maybe one of them. There's nurses across Canada and others listening. Is there something in closing that you would want to share? For me, I would like people just to know that it's wonderful to be called a public health nurse. There is no great, in my mind, there is nothing greater than being called a public health nurse. I actually hadn't realized how many times I said, hi, Jane Skinner, public health, until the day I retired and my children taped me answering the telephone. And I, it was a tape consistently, hi, Jane Skinner, public health, hi, Jane Skinner, public health. It is exciting. Um, it, and I think in the future, we are going to see public health having even more things and you're going to be hearing about us more. Everybody now knows who the chief public health officer is in the provinces. They have done amazing things. People are now looking at what are they saying? What are they meaning? I think public health nursing is a great way, even in an urban setting, to get to know your community. It's, it's so much fun when you're rural because you get to, you get to know everybody. I, my parents moved to Toronto 40 years ago, just after I went into public health. And the first thing I said to him is, make sure you find out where's your public health unit. I'll jump off what Jane said. Certainly the pandemic has highlighted the unique skill set of public health nurses. And COVID work is clinical nursing work that requires highly skilled public health nurses who understand the clinical piece, but also the art piece, sort of the art and science of nursing. How we, how we empower people and we advocate and get individuals and communities on board is a real unique skill set that the pandemic has definitely highlighted. And pu public health nurses are great detectives, whether they're investigating a communicable disease, but also sleuthing out what are the resources in a community. And you might get a phone call from somebody in another province, a friend or a family member. We're kind of the go-to people for anything. It's kind of like, I don't know where to go with this question. Well, I'll go to my public health nurse and inevitably he or she will find the answer for you because we just keep digging till we find those resources, whether it's in our own community or somewhere else. So we know people, we know the stakeholders, we know, we know who to call, where to get information. Well, I want to thank the both of you. I have just found it just a lovely conversation with the two of you. So um, again, as I've said to other places, if, I've, if I'm ever in Manitoba, maybe one time Gail's from Manitoba, if she ever goes back to Manitoba, I need to come and an opportunity to meet you face to face. You're two amazing women. So thank you. Gail, I just felt so appreciative of those two women and the story they had to tell. I think it's an example of later career nurses who have the experience and the accomplishments. When Janice said Jane's accomplishment of running a committee to get the daycare into the school so they would get their numbers up for graduation, those are the stories that most nurses don't tell or aren't heard how they make a difference. So that to me is there was so much in their history and we were just trying to tease it out. Um, so that was one thing for me, just there was so much going on. I heard again, this emphasis on community and knowing your community but also as the pub, for the public health nurse knowing your community, but as a unit also having to make connections with other organizations to make things successful. So there's really a lot of collaboration going on. So that to me was something else. I mean, there were so many things, but those two things stood out. Well, a couple of things. One of them was incredible humility, which I really yes. appreciated. These uh, two women are really leaders. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't care what their job title is. They are really leaders in public and community health, I'll say. And yet they were, when we asked for our examples, they had to help yeah. each other find the examples. Clearly, they have a ton of them. So mm -hmm. that, that was one thing impressed me. The other thing impressed me was this notion of community big. 
Mm -hmm. like the community, even at the end, when Jane said, when my parents moved to Toronto, I said, find out where your public health unit is and make sure you know you have access to the public health news. That's about community writ large. I think we do talk to students and new nurses about the uh, patient or the client and understanding the whole of who they are and a little bit about their families and whatever, but I'm not sure the bigger community is much around every individual nurse's practice. And maybe that's what the pandemic has been about. Yeah. And I just appreciated that in, in, in both of them. And the other thing, of course, I appreciated was I could put myself in the feet or whatever, in the room, mm -hmm. being the client, whether... Mm -hmm with a new baby or with a problem with housing or whatever. And just I could feel myself being willing to talk to them about things I might never talk to anybody yeah. about. They were, they were very uh, human very in the best of the word. Yeah. But it builds on our last episode of Nurses Voices with Alicia and Tegan, where they were working with the homeless. And then mm -hmm. uh, Tegan, if you recall, she also worked in acute care. And yeah. this sense I got is that sometimes maybe as nurses, we are working in silos. We are developing an expertise in a certain area. But how do you, again, have eyes beyond your practice? I don't... Mm -hmm. I, well, I, I mean, it's how do you expand your practice, but I think the one thing we should keep in mind, maybe, uh, is what I saw was the benefit of experience. Yes. So yes. if I would want to do anything, it would be to make sure that younger, newer nurses, students had the benefit of exposure to experienced practitioners yes yes uh, I, I just think there is something they can teach that it's very difficult to teach without yeah. that that expertise i think so, that i love that because if you think of what we talk about in career development and the career continuum at that entry level we've always encouraged um try an area but try other areas and then sort out where you belong. And sometimes mm -hmm. for many situations or circumstances, people end up in one spot and might not step out into another area. So I think it will be really interesting when we close these episodes of Nurses Voices, talking with educators and students and aspiring nurses to where where is this going for education? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's made, given me a lot of food for it thought is. about yeah. words yeah. we, we uh, use uh, that maybe we need to embellish a bit, words yes. like mentor, whatever. Yeah, we need to think about who do you need to yeah. to meet yeah. in order yeah. to keep you going, yeah. uh, you know, to give you a future yeah. direction, whatever. Yeah. Anyway, they were great. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Nurses Voices. You can view and listen to Nurses Voices on a variety of platforms, including YouTube and Apple Podcasts. And remember, if you have a story to tell us or want to give us some feedback, please contact us through nursesvoices.ca. Nurses Voices is created by Donner Wheeler. It is supported by the Canadian Nurses Foundation and the Canadian Nurses Association. Nurses Voices is produced by Sector Limited. Mm -hmm.